You know how slowly I walk up here at 983 next month. Oh. Well, a lot has happened in the past uh, to get here. And you know, here I am with a microphone talking. But one thing I've learned that I, about a speaker, when I'm mindful of the speaker who was introduced, and he start talking, he kept talking, and people in the rear started to leave. <laughs> He kept talking, people left, except for one fellow sitting about right here. And he leaned over and said, Sir, I'm sure glad you stayed. He said, Sir, I'm the next speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we have a speaker, but the high guy that we got to have here, I'm sure there's going to be other speakers. But anyway, I just want to share with you just very briefly. My father came to uh, America when he was 15 years old, 1909. First place he went to was Ch Chinatown in San Francisco. There a relative picked him up and he stayed with him for a few days. And uh, he took him to church, to the Presbyterian Mission in San Francisco. There he learned the Bible story of David and Goliath. He was so impressed with that big story, a giant and a little guy, the conquering. And he adopted his name as David. So he worked his way down here. He became a fruit peddler. He eventually opened a, a, a wholesale produce company. He eventually became the largest in San Diego. He was a hard worker. And um, during that time, he raised 12 children, 12 children, nine boys and three girls. And uh, one of the things he, uh, he always taught us when we, uh, came together for dinner. That was his requirement. We eat dinner together. And he would question us, Tom or Alan or Jim, what did you learn in school today? We had to share that. And so, so th th those were some of the things we, we did. And one of the things with 12 children, he always made it a point. The older ones must take care of the younger ones. The younger ones work with the older ones and work together. And we have always done that. And so I wrote a little book on that. It's, it's distributed in China. It's about a man from China with 12 children and how eventually the children became, let's say, good part of society in America. They're in medicine and law and all these different things. And so, so anyways, the thing is this, he always said that the younger ones help with the older ones, older ones help with the younger ones. But at the age of 12, my dad occasionally would go to City Hall to renew his annual license. So he'll take one of us along with him. And I remember the time when I was 12, we were standing at the, in Gas Lamp Quarter. It wasn't called Gas Lamp then. And the corner, 5th and, fifth and the G Street, the building is still there. It's a four-story building that was old City Hall. And my dad pointed that building out. He said, Tom, he said, in America, the kind of laws that come out of there is dependent on who the people put in there. And the 12-year-old guy, I said, gee, to myself, boy, that's pretty neat. I would like to be there. Sort of inside looking out rather than my dad, an uh, immigrant, outside looking in. And things were a lot different those days, you know. They had, uh, you know, like, like my dad, when his business got good, he wanted to move in a better area and so forth. But at that time, 80%, 80% at least 80% of the properties in San Diego, what you call racial covenants, racial covenants, it means that only a Caucasian can own the property. A minority cannot own it. And that they can live there as a servant or in doing those things. So that that was not later until I got in politics. Uh, you know, things are beginning to change. The state of California. I was on the state assembly. We passed a resolution to to eradicate that. But eventually, a couple of, of years later, Supreme Court outlawed that. But it takes effort. People who believe in in eradicating these these, uh, these uh, partiality, and so anyway, when I was 
36 years old, well, a little before 36, I was about 30, when I wanted to run for public office. And I don't, I'm not knocking any political parties or anything like this, but I worked in a, in a democratic area because we live in Southeast San Diego. Everything was Democrat. I, I asked the chairman, I said, sir, I would like to run for a public office one day <coughs> soon. He said, Tom, you're a good worker, you're a good guy, you're smart too. We'll get you ready, but the time is it right. In the history of San Diego, no minority has ever been elected to any, pub, any public office. We'll get you ready. In 10 years, you'll be ready, you know. And you know, to a guy, a kid, 10 years is a long time. 10 years is a long time. So I, I, I let it go at that. So one day I was at a meeting, a business meeting, and sat next to me was a retired naval commander. We talked about a lot of things, family and things like that. Then I just happened to mention something about politics. I would like to run, like to run for public office. And, and, and I told him about that 10 year period. He said, Tom, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Tomorrow I'll take you at the home federal building on the 11th floor. He's a good friend of mine. Meet me on the 11th floor, and they gave me the room number and so forth. I'll see you there tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So I was there at 11 o'clock, and he was with me. And so we knocked on the door. The door opened. There stood this guy about six foot three, built like a bulldog. <laughs> he stuck out his hand. He said, you're a town mom, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. And what the hell is this that you say you shouldn't run for public office until 10 years from now? I said, well, I, I, I'm supposed to get ready. He said, he, said, he, said, he said a few more flowery words and said, you know, if you're interested in running public office, I'll help you. He said, I, I don't care what anybody says. If you got what it takes to run, you run. And so he took me under his wing. And he happened to be the chairman of the Republican Party. And I'm not knocking at any party now, but those were the times. And he just, and he just told me how to run for public office and these different things. And, you know, I did win. I was the first minority ever elected to a public office in San Diego.